rota, the tangle, and our new project peak. So before I start, I know we have like three meetups here, different groups. Let me, let, let's just see a show of hands here. Who would say they have a reasonable, reasonably good understanding of what distributed ledger technology is? Okay. Or blockchain technology? Who understands blockchain technology? Okay, it's, I'll say it's around 30%. So I'll definitely do a little bit of explaining while I go through this stuff. So let me start by introducing myself. My name is Mike Geike. I'm the CEO of Advanced Blockchain AG. I'm 34 years old and I'm a mathematician. And I started my career in London as an investment banker. I, I traded there for JP Morgan for six years before I moved to Berlin where I joined Zalando, a, a, an e-commerce company that grew to a, a, a multi-billion dollar company in a, only a few years. And um, it was there that I, I led teams of mathematicians and data scientists and therefore the first time I understood and learned how powerful artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms can be. And it was there that I learned about consensus algorithms as well. And as you might know, consensus algorithms are the algorithms that are at the core of distributed ledger technology. And when I say distributed ledger technology, this is a super title for technologies like blockchain or the Tangle. Those are all distributed ledger technologies. And in 2013, I went to my first Bitcoin conference and I was really electrified how passionate the people were about using this technology to really make a change in this world. And I immediately saw the room, it was, it was not like today, it was really only a small crowd of people, but it was only the smartest people that I met in a room and I knew immediately there's something to this technology. And since then we've been working in the field and uh, with projects that I, will, that I will talk about. So our companies, there's Advanced Blockchain IG and there's Nakamoto, they have a very strong partnership. And Together, we do projects like the Peak Platform that I will talk about later. So Advanced Blockchain AG is a publicly listed company. So you can trade and buy shares on the Düsseldorf Stock Exchange in Germany. And we put this company in place to be the connector to the real world economy. To have a company that speaks to the corporate world and understands their language and can also take be a gateway for investment into this great technology. And so we are a little bit like a consultancy firm, if you will, but of course we're so much more than that because in this field you um, you hold digital tokens, you might pay your employees in digital tokens, and we also invest in startups and in promising projects within the distributed ledger technology space. And then there's Nakamoto, who are really the technology brain, if you will. They are the ones that are really connected to the community. They're the ones that organize meetups, just like this one, and are very connected to the crypto scene. And so, like I said, there's a strong partnership between these two companies, and this will most likely going forward grow even stronger without uh, going into too much detail. And so, let's get into the topic. DLT, Distributed Ledger Technology, has so many parallels with the Internet of the 90s. 
back in the 90s, people were made aware of the internet by its simplest, most simple application, which is the email. All of a sudden, people understood, okay, wow, I can send an email around the world in seconds. And they were asking the same questions that people ask today about blockchain technology. Who's paying for my postage? Who does the internet belong to? Where's the cat? I don't understand it. And similarly today, Bitcoin, in 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote a white paper that for the first time in the history of mankind solved the double spending problem. And thanks to this innovation, for the first time in the history of humanity, we have a chance to really build decentralized organizations and structures. And why is this important? Why, why does decentralization matter? Because it levels out the playing field. It's getting rid of higher power structures. It's getting rid of the leaders of control that have historically always been grabbed by, by early adopters and manipulated just to stay in power. But instead, with distributed ledger technology, we have equitable solutions that can be encoded in an algorithm and most importantly, cannot be corrupted. And this is key. Because all that decentralized ledger technology means is that we now have the chance to put data in a ledger and it cannot be corrupted. This is the key. In a centralized system, you know the cloud, you can upload data, but you always have to trust the third party with that data and so it can be tempered with and hack it's, it's vulnerable to attack. So this makes this technology so powerful. So just Bitcoin is just the simplest use case and application of this technology, just like email was in the 90s. And five years later, Ethereum came along and brought us the first platform that allowed us to build decentralized applications on. So my thing, okay. Um, what does, that, what does that mean? What can I do with that? It basically allows people to create their own ideas on a blockchain. So, one, there's many thousand examples. One I find fascinating, for example, is a concept called proof of publication. The idea of an author publishing content and thereby mining a coin. So the author being rewarded for publishing content by a digital token. And if he attracts a lot of readers, he gets more reward. But even you as a reader, if you upvote the content and other readers agree with you, you also be rewarded. And so you see, you are being rewarded just by the consensus of the network that what you are doing is useful. And so you see how these cryptocurrencies are so much more than just a currency. Yeah? They are a way of creating self-regulating dynamic feedback loops that show you exactly how individual behavior leads to, via an incentive structure that you set, to the desired outcome. In this case, the desired outcome for better social conversation. And so they are a much more powerful form of regulating. 
And people behave well in such a system not because we tell them to or because we threaten them with punishment, but because the incentives that we set are overwhelming. And the disincentives to behave badly in such an environment are also overwhelming. That's why these consensus algorithms are so powerful. And we compare this here with JavaScript because Back in the days, email was, was simple and features were all hard-coded in. And people wanted to bold font and so people built these features in. But so people wanted different features and different features. So they decided, let's just um, create a programming language and let people build their own features. And by enabling people to build their own features, it opens up a box of innovation and creativity and resulted in what we know the internet as today. Yeah, and nobody could have imagined what that looked like back when JavaScript was developed. And it's the same uh, point now. No one can really imagine what the world will look like in 10 years' time. And then only two years later, IOTA came along and solved a very crucial element as well that I get into. They solved the scalability issue. And I will, I will get into that as well. So IOTA is really a technology that can bring distributed ledger technology to the masses. And we believe 2018 will be the year where we see real world applications being built on this technology, on these platforms, where companies really starts benefiting from these technologies. And peak will be a major part over here, and I will speak about this a little later as well. And so you see all these currencies that exist out there, there's a lot of them, I only mentioned a few. If you put them all together and Add and, and see how much they're worth, you end up at this moving average of 300 billion. Anyone who checked today, we're actually at, at around 500 billion dollars. And although this seems like a big number and people talking about bubbles and, and whatnot, but if you look at this, this number is only 0.06% of all financial assets globally, not even including derivatives. So it's a negligible amount compared to all financial assets. It's really only this tiny splinter here in this huge ocean of possibilities. And financial assets are just the, the low-hanging fruit to be brought on a de decentralized ledger. <coughs> There are so many other areas that this technology will disrupt. Almost any area that you can think of can be connected to distributed ledger technology. Digital identity is just one example. We signed a letter of intent with Glasses24, just a small example. It's they want to be the first optician to upload their customers' data on a decentralized ledger. We upload our personal data every day, and it's becoming more and more and more every year. And it's really valuable data, and you as a user don't actually benefit from doing this. You trust some central organization with your data, and they're monetized on that data. Whereas if it's stored on a distributed ledger, you would be in full control of what happens with it. You could choose whether you want to keep it private or whether you want to share the data and monetize it. And then the rewards should be directly to you, the user, and not some central organization. And then, of course, we have Internet of Things, for example, machines. They're getting smarter all the time. 
and they will start communicating with each other. They have already done that, but they also want a secure system to transfer information on and exchange value with each other. And they should all globally, as this net grows, should speak the same language. So we need one backbone, one language that they can speak globally. And we need the technology that can handle this and can scale. To give you one example of where distributed ledger technology is useful, this is one that is very simple and almost everyone can understand, I think. So take this plug here, for example, and I think all future cars coming out, they will have a smart chip in every single car that is sold. And this chip records the mileage of the car and uploads this mileage into a distributed ledger. And you as the owner of a car, you have an app, and you can check this recording against the odometer of the car and check that it's correct. And then when you come to sell the car, the buyer can check in the ledger what the mileage says and also check it against the odometer in the car and has 100% certainty that the number in the odometer has not been tempered with. So he doesn't need to go to a third party to get verification that it's not been tempered with. It allows a very simple example that shows you how two people are allowed to conduct in business without the need of a middleman. To conduct in frictionless business. And there are countless examples of this where this technology enables people to come together and work in a frictionless way. But like I said, you need a technology that can scale. Bitcoin right now can do around 3.6 transactions per second. These are MasterCards can handle around 55,000 transactions per second. But once we have machines running around, transacting with each other, we need a technology that can handle 100 million transactions per second, or a billion and more transactions per second. Now Ethereum, that you probably all know, is a bit more efficient than Bitcoin, you can handle around 20 transactions per second, but you can also see here, as transactions increase, which you want to happen on your platform, you want more users, if your fees increase as well, you run into problems. So let me just quickly run you through how a blockchain works. If you want to do a transaction, you broadcast your transaction to the network and it's included with all other transactions in the mempool. And then the miners take this pool and form it into a block. But if there are too many transactions, some don't fit into the block which has a limited size. And if you want to fit into the block, then you increase your fee and you compete against all other transactions, which results in this increase in fees. And this is how a blockchain works, why it is so, why it has these scaling issues. And don't get me wrong, I think that the blockchain technology is, is great and it definitely has its place in the crypto space. Like Bitcoin is a very secure ledger and it works as a store of value, but it's not going to be the technology that, is, that will be brought to the masses quickly. Now, thankfully, we have this amazing technology now, which is called IOTA, and they solve the scalability issue by having the genius idea of getting rid of the blockchain altogether and replaced it by a mathematical concept 
called directed acyclic growth, which is not like a chain anymore, but is more like a dynamic tree. And there are no more blocks in this directed acyclic graph, but single transactions. And if you broadcast your transaction, doesn't end up in a mempool, but actually you do a little proof of work yourself. So what the miners do in the blockchain, they do the proof of work, something in the block. You do it yourself and validate two previous transactions. And because the users do it themselves, you allow for this unlimited scalability. And because there are no miners, there are also no transaction fees. And this is another amazing property that this has, that IOS has. Because it opens it up to applications that were thought impossible before. You can do zero value transactions. So just transfer data, for example. Like the data marketplace they've just recently launched. And so you can also do offline transactions and it's theoretically quantum proof. Of course this cannot be tested because there are no quantum computers, but theoretically it looks very sound. So IOTA, by having this setup, IOTA has the properties that the more transactions come online, Contrary to a blockchain, which gets slower and more expensive, the Tangle network gets faster, more stable, and more secure. And those are amazing properties for a distributed ledger technology. Those are exactly the properties that you need to have when you want to bring this technology to the masses. Which brings us to the next point, that I, and the last point that I want to talk about, which is our current project that we do, which is called the PEAK platform. PEAK stands for PEAK technology. And like I said, you want as many users as you can get on the Tangle because it makes it stronger, more stable and more secure. And how do you get as many users as possible very quickly onto your platform? It is by creating a second layer on top of the Tangle that allows you to tokenize any of your ideas, any of your assets. So those of you that are familiar with Ethereum, they will straight away realize it is a bit similar to the ERC-20 standard of Ethereum. And the ERC-20 standard of Ethereum also allows you to create tokens. It's the platform that we've seen all the recent ICOs come through. But Peak will be very different in respect that it's built on top of the Tangle. And this means that the coins and the tokens that you create through the Peak platform automatically inherit the same properties that the IOTA token has. And that means unlimited scalability, no transaction fees, no miners, you can do offline transactions, and be quantum proof. This is what we're aiming for. Robert, yeah, Robert says, this is what we're aiming for, of course. <laughs> and so how does this work? Without getting into too much detail, a platform, another thing that we're aiming for, is that it should be made as simple 
as clicking a button to create your own tokens. It should be doable by anyone who doesn't have a programming background. <laughs> but what? So the technical bit is not for you to worry about. No one has to understand this technology to use the technology. How many of you understand what the SMTP protocol does? <laughs> yeah, I know you do, you <laughs> But who else understands what the protocol does when you send an email? And do you really care? No, you shouldn't care. This is for our developers to care about. And what happens is when you create your own token, you initiate a transaction on the Tangle and you declare the total supply of your tokens. So Peak is just another protocol that has its data embedded in Tangle transactions. And there are no smart contracts yet on the Tangle. I say yet because I know there will be in the future just because this abstraction layer of smart contracts makes so much sense. But for the time being, we have to make sure that your created coins cannot be double spent. And without smart contracts, we developed a three-step process that prevents the double spending. And basically emulates the necessary state changes that would otherwise be the smart contract. The technical details, if you're interested, are in the white paper, which is right now under review by the IOTA Foundation. So we work very closely with the IOTA Foundation because it makes so much sense. P and the users that it will bring to the platform makes the tangle stronger. And I know in the community there has been a lot of talk, is it actually useful, it's useful for the platform, yes, but is it also going to bring a lot of value to the IOTA token? There's been a lot of worry that people will create their own tokens and use those for payments and they won't use the IOTA token anymore. Well, let me tell you that yes, you're right, people will do that. They will create their own token and use it in their own little closed loop ecosystems. And they will create their own assets that will, that, that will trade and interact with and only use their tokens that represent these assets in their closed loop. But you have lots of these hubs and once they want to talk to each other, they will have this one currency that everyone on this network accepts, and that's the IOTA token. It will always be the standard coin that everyone in this whole ecosystem will accept. And that's why it will, of course, bring so much value to the IOTA token. I'm 100% I'm sure about it. And so once the P platform is up and running, you will be able to tokenize any of your assets, anything that you perceive to have any kind of value, and attach it to a digital token that exists solely for this purpose, and then take it and <coughs> trade it around the world in seconds. And just like in the internet in the 90s, nobody had a clue what the world would look like today, how connected we'd all be, how powerful our smartphones would be, and how we conduct a business. And this technology will be even more disruptive and move even faster than the internet has done. Because now we can transact securely anything that has any value in a frictionless way. And I'm so excited to be part of this with Advanced Blockchain AG and with Nakamoto.
So come and join us and be a part of it as well. Thank you very much. So hello everyone, my name is Robert and uh, before we dive into uh, Q&A, um, uh, give me the chance to introduce myself a little. Um, if I'm talking nonsense, it's probably the lack of sleep. Um, the five of us, we uh, just got off the plane. It's our first time being in Tokyo. We feel very welcome and a special thanks to uh, Norbert Gacke for uh, bringing such great audience and giving us the opportunity uh, to speak in front of you about uh, what we've been doing and uh, what we love so much. Sure, so, thanks, thanks to Norbert. Yeah, thanks to Norbert. So, um, my name is Robert Kufner. I'm the founder of Nakamoto. We're a distributed ledger technology company based in Berlin, which um, I think is the crypto hub on planet Earth. So, um, we've been traveling around a little, and um, um, it's not the valley, it's not uh, in East Asia, it's, it's Berlin when it comes to knowledge towards this new disruptive technology. And um, for me, it all began in 2010. Started off as a Bitcoin miner, went through all three generations of like CPU, GPU, the ASIC chip revolution, and then been uh, quite active in the uh, Ethereum world for two, two and a half years. Until earlier this year, it was um, April when I met Dominic Sheena, who's um, the founder um, of the IOTA network together with, Dom, uh, together with um, David Sonstevo. And I ran into um, yeah, my, my uh, partner, Florian, who, who just um, arrived here um, from Berlin as well. And I got tangalized the same day. Because um, Bitcoin and Ethereum and blockchain technology as we know it, is a fantastic application of distributed ledger technology. And uh, it worked wonderful and wonders in the past couple of years and we learned a lot. But this year, with the IOTA protocol, this entire space has seriously the chance to totally take off and have a real impact on real-world application and use cases that have never been able to perform before. And that's why we're so fascinated about it. And I mean, we've, we've been talking about advanced blockchain AG and Nakamoto and our peak project, but I also understand myself as a big IOTA evangelist because I truly believe in the underlying technology and that it's here to stay and that it is um, the next big thing in, in the tech space because it will disrupt and reshape several industries in a way that we haven't seen before. And um, yeah, like I'm, I'm super happy for um, all your questions with a strong focus towards IOTA and um, uh, our peak project, which we'd really uh, like to talk about more with you uh, in the next uh, 45 minutes. So thanks for having us.